Hello, my name is Adam. I'm from Intel, and today I'll be talking about optimizing CPU inference in MXNet 2.0. Since inference is a commonly deployed workload in cloud servers, we can vastly reduce energy cost and end-to-end -end latency by simply optimizing our model. And here's today's agenda. First, I'll talk about the performance bottlenecks of modern deep learning models, then quickly recap what has changed between MXNet 1.8 2.0 regarding optimizations, after this short introduction, I'll move forward to optimizations implemented for CPU. I'll show some results and finally talk about the future plans. We can divide performance bottlenecks of deep learning models into two main categories. The first group consists of memory-bound operations. These are functions that don't require complex computations, but they mainly manipulate data or perform many simple calculations. Let's take activation functions as an example. In RHEL, we must read tensor from memory, next CPU checks if an element value is greater than zero, and then writes this value or zero back. This operation is not complicated at all, but we have to make two data movements, read and write. Such operations are so-called memory bound because their performance is limited by the memory bandwidth of our hardware. Another example of such operations are element-wise addition and multiplication, concatenating tensors or normalization layers. The second bottleneck group is made of compute-bound operations, in which computing the result requires much more time than reading and writing data. The main operations belonging to that category are fully connected in convolutional layers. In these two, we have to perform fairly complex matrix calculations that take most of the model execution time. In this case, the roofline of the performance is bounded by the computing capability of our hardware. These two types of bottlenecks should be addressed in a slightly different way. MXNet version 2.0 introduces some changes in the interface. Gluon API has now become the default one, superseding symbolic and model APIs. It is unifying the flexibility of imperative programming with the performance benefits of symbolic programming. Moreover, MXNet 2.0 now supports fully NumPy semantics. Regarding our optimizations, all these changes are now co fully compatible with operator fusing, operator fusing and quantization. Another major change is that we now utilize the Gluon API and Subgraph API to make model level optimizations. Deep learning models consist of many small operations that are memory bound. Let's take a look at how we can optimize them. Almost every model can be represented as a directed graph, where operators and tensors are represented as nodes. Each connection between operators, where the output of a single operator can be input to another one, is represented in the graph as an edge. Operator fusion is nothing else but replacing two or more subsequent operators with a single one combining all their functions. Thanks to this, we can get rid of MXNet engine overhead between operator calls and reduce memory read and write operations. It is because CPU can now compute, for example, convolution and immediately apply activation on a resulting value. Batch normalization during inference is mostly used as a simple affine transformation, thus we can merge it with convolution by adjusting the weights and biases accordingly. As we can see on the slide, also element-wise addition can be folded into convolution kernel by adding the result of convolution to the output tensor instead of overwriting it. This way, we've got two kernel invocations instead of seven, which is a great improvement in terms of the amount of data being moved between operators. I'll show the performance benefits of operator fusion in a while. Here we have sample code and MXNet with package visualization. As you can see in the example, we are enabling NumPy semantics support and building a simple model with blue on blocks using similar operators as on the slide before. To enable graph optimization for CPU, we only need to call the single function, optimize for, with input data and specified backend as a tape, mkldnn. We plan also to add support for 1DNN name, since it's the present name of our optimization library. So summing up, all we have to do to get a fused fluent model is to call a single function on it, and then we can benefit from the free speedup that Graph Fusion gives us. Let's move to the next method of increasing model's performance. Quantization is a process of converting model from cloud 32 to either sign or unsigned in type precision. To reduce the complexity of compute-heavy operations, and the number of memory bits being read, we may convert our model to work on an in-8 data type. It can heavily increase the model's performance 
but can also affect a little bit its accuracy. However, using ca calibration techniques, we can reduce accuracy difference to almost 0%. 0%. Before we start the quantization procedure, we have to have the pre-trained or fine-tuned FP FP32 model. Then, the quantization procedure will fuse that model, scrap, as I described earlier. Then, we have to invoke the quantize net function with the different parameters, like for example granularity of quantization. So whether the scales should be computed channel-wise or tensor-wise. Or we can exclude some layers or specific patterns or names or even the whole operators from quantization. At this point, new nodes are, that are called quantize, requantize or dequantize are created in a graph and operators which support int 8 computations are now converted to this data type. Next step is model calibration. It is optional, but important in terms of performance. This is the process where we collect node statistics and real data to find the best thresholds for scales, for requantize operators. Otherwise, these nodes will calculate scales online during each inference pass. We are supporting three types of calibrations. First one is naive, where the threshold is based on minimum and maximum value on the terrestrials. Second one is entropy, where thresholds is calculated using KL divergence to determine the best symmetrical quantization thresholds for given histogram of values. And the third one is custom method, where a user can pass his own calibration collector uh, and calculate these thresholds in his own way. Uh, finally, after all of that, we can deploy the optimized and quantized model to the server or, or cloud service like AWS. Here we have an example of how to quantize pre-train ResNet50 in MXNet without calibration. Again, like in the Fusion case, we have to call only one fun function, which is quantizeNet from the MXNet contrib quantization package. We pass, net, we pass the network and the list of input data shapes. Below we can see the visualization on how some blocks can look like after quantization. Both convolutions good quantize attribute set to true which means that they will be expecting int 8 input. Uh, we can see also the uh, quantize, requantize, and dequantize operators in a graph. And however, this solution is suboptimal because requantization overhead can greatly slow down our model. In this example, we'll take the advantage of calibration to get the performance boost. This code looks similar to the previous slide, but here we are utilizing Blue-on data loader with the calibration data. Quantize net function parameters have changed and now we are passing calib mode entropy and calib data equals calib data loader. Uh, in this example, this calib data is artificially created for just for the presentation purposes, but in a real scenario, we will need to use the part of a real data, for example, 10 batches of your validation data set to get the satisfac satisfying accuracy. Then this function runs a model's inference on the calibration data several times to get the layer statistics and after that we have our model quantized, calibrated and ready to perform inference tasks. Uh, as we can see in the graph, requantized nodes disappeared now because they are fused with the operators. And minimum and maximum calib ranges appeared in the operator's attributes. You can pass also other attributes to the quantized net function to better align your calibration process. For example, you can change the calib mode to naive or even custom and use different uh, number of batches of calib data. data. Here we present the result of performance improvements for some computer vision models. Uh, we can see that the popular ResNet50 gains about 62% speed up with just an operate, operator fusion and it is more uh, than six times faster than the base uh, while quantized. Uh, all these quantization speedups are achieved with negligible accuracy drops, what will be shown in the next slide. Uh, we can see also that the mobile net benefits the most from the uh, presented optimizations. It's mainly due to the efficiency of fusing. Moreover, in the quantized version, rel 6, which is the activation function in MobileNet, can be achieved just by adjusting scales factors in in 8 computation. Thus, we, can, we could optimize even more. Uh, on this slide, we, we have the results of top 1 ImageNet accuracy for computer vision models. And as you can see, 
by calling single function you can gain a significant performance boost almost without losing accuracy. In the chart, the biggest accuracy drop is actually for mobile NetB2, but it's still only half a percentage point less than FP FP32 model. Uh, on the other hand, uh, VGG19 has no accuracy lost at all after the quantization, and it's still over four times faster than the, than the baseline model. All of today's discussed features and results are possible due to MXNet utilizing Intel 1 API Deep Neural Network Library, or just 1DNN, previously known also as an MKL DNN. The library is open source, cross-platform, and specially optimized for Intel architectures, but have also ex experimental support for others. Uh, on CPU-based architectures, 1DNN uses just-in-time code generation to deploy the code optimized for the latest supported instruction set on the current platform so it can fully utilize vector instructions like AVX512 DNNI to speed up in eight computations. Uh, there is still a lot of things to do in terms of optimization. Our future plans are to support additional fusion patterns existing in widely used modern neural network architectures, for example in BER. Uh, moreover, we are working on enabling more and more models to work fine with int8 inference, not only in the computer vision domain. Uh, for example, NLP inference is a huge chunk of current cloud usage, so quantizing RNNs or transformers like structures can greatly lower the costs of such inference. Another topic is training neural networks with the purpose of running in on in a precision. Uh, we can achieve better post-quantization accuracy by utilizing so-called QAT, which is quantized error training. MXNet currently doesn't implement it, but it will be beneficial to do so. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions or topics to discuss, I encourage you to contact me. And have a nice day.